but let's talk about value. Patent valuation really comes down to how much does a patent add to the business bottom line of a company. That's really where really the bottom line of valuing a patent. Part of the problem, however, is that the economic value of a patent may differ, may vary over time. It will vary among other things because of the technologies involved. So if you, for example, have had a patent for 3G phone technology, the minute 4G came out, your patent on 3G immediately became less valuable. It depends on the market you are dealing with. Okay? It also depends on how this patent works with other IP rights, particularly if the technology you patent is dependent on another protected pat technology. Do you value the patent or do you value the patent, the other technologies that may or may not be patented? So it's a question of do you value a patent by itself or do you value a patent as part of a portfolio? Because a lot of patents may be valuable unto themselves. Some of them may be worthless without the portfolio. So it, it turns out to be a much, much trickier question than it might initially seem. And so this is also much trickier than, um, than say, real property, whereas you can, you can value the house by itself. You know, um, of course, the house would also be, the value of the house would also be dependent on other factors such as the neighborhood, the general economy, et cetera. Now, and patents can be valued for a number of reasons. I'll basically talk about valuing for um, financial purposes and so for uh, damages in this class. But the valuation itself is not simple. Um, and to understand why valuation of patents is not simple, I am going to look at a copyright case. Now you might think, well, that's rather strange. You're looking at copyright <coughs> law to, uh, to talk about patent law. The issue here is not really the IP rights involved. It's the methodology of the calculation. So this is, really, this is a copyright viola, uh, infringement battle between two companies selling two dolls, two, two families of dolls, I should say. You can read the facts. Essentially, the problem here came down to one party's claim of damages. And what is the basis for this claim? Now, you can read this in your notes. But really, a lot of this was dependent on certain assumptions. And the assumptions that were made by the council were obviously challenged by the other council. You have loss of chance, um, past events, voila, blah, 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 okay? You can also look at the term of the projection of the valuation, and you can challenge on the term. Now, this is just copyright. We're not talking about fancy technologies. We're talking about children's dolls. Nothing special technologically. Nothing unusual other than you have a doll that somebody says looks like my doll. How much money do you think we should pay? And the points on this case, after you read all the facts and the read the case, really come down to a couple of things. Proving loss based on real, not speculative chances. There is a notion that the future is unpredictable. The time frames of the analysis, whether they're predictable or not. Then there's also something else here. Why 
is the product successful? Now, if you're claiming that I lost, say, $100 million because, let's say, Bunny's product infringed mine, then the other party has a legitimate, legitimate right to ask, well, how do you know that if my product, Bunny's product, was not on the market, you could have fulfilled the orders? Okay, you're saying, well, Bunny's product, Bunny got $400 million worth of orders that I wouldn't have gotten, or whatever number. And then I, then the question is, could you have fulfilled a $400 million order, or $100 million order? Did you have the sales channels? Did you have the infrastructure? Did you have the production facilities? Okay. So you can see, just on this notion alone, this case alone, not considering technology, not considering other factors, such as patent um, terms, payments, etc., or even in, or even patent infringement. All of this is already a pretty difficult set of hurdles to overcome in proving uh, any kind of claim of uh, loss or damage. And in the case of a patent, you have further questions on infringement of technologies, the technical elements, etc. You also have issues of whether your technology is attractive to the market or not. What else is going on? What substitutes there are?